Hey everybody, I'm Tony, originally from Michigan in the USA. And I'm Beth from the UK. And we and our two teenage boys just got back from an amazing nine-day cruise on the Celebrity Constellation. Join us as we explore some of the highlights of this wonderful ship. And if you like what you see, you know what to do. Starting aft at the very top of the ship, you have the rooftop terrace. Great space, there's plenty of sun lounges and day beds, and they're all free of charge. The space is really open and sunny, there's plenty of shade for those who want to stay cool, and the big screen is constantly showing sporting events, movies, and the like. We didn't come up here as often as we thought we would because we had a really, really fantastic balcony where we spent a lot of our time. More on that in upcoming vlogs. And from our perspective, celebrities seem to be trying hard to make their ships green. There are opportunities everywhere to recycle. Moving forward on deck 11, we come to the sports deck, where you can play basketball, pickleball, soccer, and anything else you can think of. Going forward to the front of the ship, we start to see what will become a recurring theme here on the Celebrity Constellation, plenty of sunbeds. And on our trip, this equated to more empty sunbeds and more places to lie in the sun outside of the pool deck than on any other ship we've travelled on. We filmed this the morning after a big storm, which is why many of the areas are still wet. But the fantastic crew, and they really are fantastic on the Constellation, wasted no time in clearing up the excess water. Midship on deck 11, we find the jogging track. This is unfortunately flanked on both sides by quite a few sunbeds. However, it does offer stunning views at sea and while in port and of the pool deck below. These pools are located on deck 10, which is where we're traveling to next. The Ocean View Cafe is the Constellation's buffet and it's open from early in the morning to late in the evening, with only a couple of short changeover breaks between mealtimes. Even then, there's still some food available. One of the more popular morning spots is the Eggs Benedict Station, where you can have many types of Eggs Benedict made to order. There are four free drink stations in the Ocean View alone, as well as one more by the pool and another in the Solarium offering fresh brewed coffee, decaf and regular, a wide variety of teas and a selection of cold drinks. On our cruise there was always iced tea and juices in the cold drink section, but our kids favourite by far was the lemonade. It wasn't always on offer, but when it was, a lot of lemonade was drunk by our two. Located at the back of the ocean view during breakfast you'll find a pancake and waffle station which at lunchtime changes to offer fresh sandwiches and grilled meat and fish to order. Just beyond that there is the sunset bar area which doubles as outside seating for the buffet. We found there was almost always a table free out here and no matter the time of day the inside of the ocean view was never too crowded either. find one of two omelette stations serving both made to order and ready-made omelettes every morning. Just past there is the dry cereal station. Every time we passed by this seemed well stocked and uh, seemed to change some of its offering at several times throughout the nine-day cruise. Walking further forward, we come to one of three pastry sections in the ocean view. Most mornings our kid took advantage of these pastries as a kind of breakfast dessert. And this is right next to a cold fish section. A ham carving station. And 
in the section offering American breakfast. The biggest difference between this and the English breakfast section, as far as this American can tell, was the kind of bacon provided, as well as different potatoes and sausages. Right at the front was the pastry of the day. And around the corner, just past the fruit, was the English breakfast. Apart from what Tony said, this differed from the American offering by having baked beans and hash browns as well. There is also an Asian breakfast on offer. As you're coming out of the ocean view, headed towards the pools on midship, you find the ice cream station. Now this was unique for most ships we've been on in that they not only have soft serve, they offer a huge variety of scooped ice creams as well. Now this comes in cones and bowls alike, and they have tons of toppings, all for free. You can also get cookies there if you want to order an ice cream sandwich. Our kids went here daily. Now leaving the ocean view, we come to the pool deck, midship deck 10. This was a popular spot on a med cruise such as ours, as you can imagine. On embarkation day, the ship very helpfully left notes on each sunbed, stating it's not possible for passengers to reserve the sunbeds. We thought this was great, but again, there were so many sunbeds on the ship, it was hardly a problem. One of the first places you come to as you leave the ocean view is the Mast Grill. It's open throughout the day and it's complimentary, making burgers, hot dogs, fries, and everything like that. We have to say it never looked the freshest, and the choice was rather limited so all four of us gave it a miss on this cruise. Turning around from the mast grill, you find one of the four hot tubs on the pool deck of the Constellation. And just past that is the wading pool, which is open to both children and adults who just want to cool off. We used it several times on this cruise, which was a hot one. The main pool is further forward to the wading pool. It's a good size, but it's very deep, so not necessarily good for little ones and non-swimmers as there's no shallow end. But perfect for us and our teenage boys who are both around six foot tall. There are pool hoists for those who may need extra help getting into and out of the water. It's worth pointing out that these pools got extremely busy on sea days, and toward the end of the port days, they were also busy. But we found them fairly empty at non-peak times, such as mornings and when we were in port. Moving forward and going up to Deck 11 for a moment, we find ourselves at one of the Celebrity Constellation's three upcharge dining venues, the Italian-themed Tuscan Grill. While we did eat in the other two specialty restaurants on board, we wish we had booked Tuscan Grill for a number of reasons, not least of which is the beautiful decor and theming inside. The food also looked amazing. you'll find entertainment areas for all the family, venues where adults, kids and teens can all fill their evenings if they wish. You'll also find this rather nice seating area. And the forward elevators. The Reflections Lounge is a very big venue with incredible 180 degree views out the front of the ship. There's a stage for a live band, a dance floor, and of course a full-service bar with a DJ booth alongside. There were a couple of small-scale production shows we took in at this venue, as well as a themed 80s night and even a silent disco at the end of the cruise. We found there to be plenty of space most of the time in Reflections, though visibility for the production shows was very poor for anyone who wasn't sat at the front. Next to Reflections is Camp at Sea for ages 3 to 12. Here you can sign your 3 to 9 year olds in and out as and when you want and those 10 to 12 years of age are free to come and go as they please within the camp's opening hours. We didn't film in here for safeguarding reasons. Next door to Camp at Sea is the X Club, aimed at the 13 to 17 age range. Again, we didn't film inside for safeguarding purposes, but overall our two were disappointed with the offering at X Club. Found it more of a gaming centre than a teens club. More on this in future vlogs.
Directly below this area, back on deck 10, is the spa. Not only the spa is here, but the gym, which includes a sauna, and the solarium itself, which includes the spa cafe. gym on the Constellation is a pretty good size, with plenty of newish resistance machines covering all muscle groups. There are also plenty of treadmills and cardio machines, with signs limiting passengers to a maximum of 20 minutes at a time. Very useful on busy sea days. Past the gym is the spa area itself. The spa is beautiful and covers all the normal treatments, massages, hair care and alternative therapies. Everything that you'd expect on a celebrity ship. We did find it a bit pricey so didn't indulge on this trip, but it's there if you want it. Though I never saw it advertised, there's an amazing sauna in the men's changing room in the spa. It was hot enough outside that we never used it, but just look at those views. As you leave the spa, heading midship, you hit one of the most beautiful public spaces on board the Celebrity Constellation, the Solarium. This is an area reserved for passengers aged 16 and up, meaning our eldest could take advantage of the solarium with or without us, but our youngest, who's 14, could not. There's a variety of seating in the solarium, from tables and chairs to padded chairs to sofas. And even though it's an indoor space with a glass ceiling, You'll even find some more sunbeds in here. In general, the solarium is sometimes just a nice place to sit and get out of the way. In the middle of the solarium is a large pool, flanked on either side by two hot tubs. My 16-year-old and I will give the pool area a test run in a future vlog. We'll let you know what we thought, but in general, it was far superior experience to what was on offer outside on the pool deck. accessible lifts to get passengers with mobility concerns into and out of the hot tubs and the pool area. Toward the back of the solarium you'll find another free drink station, just like in the ocean view, and just like the one on the pool deck. Here you can also order a freshly made smoothie for an additional charge, and at certain times of the day, breakfast and lunch, complimentary healthy food options such as turkey wraps, homemade cereal bars and tasty snacks such as peanut butter and banana bagels are available. Overall, on our cruise, the solarium was often cooler than it was on the outside pool deck, 
which is surprising because it's effectively a big greenhouse. But it made it a tranquil and refreshing getaway from the other areas on the ship. We really enjoyed our time in this area. I'm sure other cruisers do too. On deck nine midship is the eye lounge. This workspace is filled with Apple Macs, allowing passengers to go online for a fee. There is even a printer, handy for printing out boarding passes for your flights home. We found this to be a quiet space and hardly ever used. Stairs in the middle of the eye lounge lead straight into the Celebrity Constellation's small library. There is a range of books available to borrow and tables if you wish to play cards or board games. We try to avoid taking the lifts or the elevators on cruises, not only because we want to burn off some of those cruise calories, but also to leave space for those who need to use them more than us. So taking the stairs down to Deck 5 midship, you come to the Grand Foyer, which stretches from Deck 5 all the way down to Deck 3. The starboard side of the Grand Foyer on Deck 5 is Café El Baccio. Here you can order specialist coffees and coffee liqueur drinks pretty much any time of the day or evening. These drinks are free if you're on the drinks package, which we were not, so four iced lattes came to $25 at the time of filming. Free of charge, however, are the cakes and pastries at Café El Baccio. The types of cakes on offer change daily, and in our opinion, they were much better quality than those in the ocean view. Staying on Deck 5 on the starboard side, just past Café El Baccio, is the Emporium, the main shopping centre for the Celebrity Constellation. First you come across the Art Sales section, which is fairly standard to what you see on most ships. Across from that is the Future Cruise area, where you can get moderate discounts on any Celebrity Cruise you book. We were te very tempted by this, and probably would have booked something if we didn't already have trips booked all the way into 2025. Jewelry is always a big seller on cruise ships, and opposite the art gallery you'll find the Constellation's Effie branch. Next to that is the section of the Emporium which opens up into an open market type area. Uh, this was used throughout the cruise for a variety of sales. On either side of this were two general merch shops. Compared to other cruise lines we found the branded merch rather weak. And a few steps forward on Deck 5, you come to the upper mezzanine of the Celebrity Theatre. Having spent over eight years working myself as a production team cast member on a variety of cruise ships, I can say that it's a wonderful space for both celebrities' high-quality production shows and visiting cabaret acts alike. The proscenium stage was both large and well used by the performers, and while we didn't bring drinks into the theatre ourselves, it was a nice touch that most seats had a lit table for beverages. Staying on Deck 5, but moving aft from the theatre, we find the Gelateria. Here you can enjoy scooped ice cream for an upcharge. Moving further along, you come across Sushi on 5, the second of three speciality dining venues on the ship. Unlike Tuscan Grill, we did actually eat at Sushi on 5. We'll get to that in a future vlog. For now, we'll stick to the facts, and you can book lunch or dinner at Sushi on 5 on any day of your cruise and there's usually no need to book weeks or days in advance. Also, unlike Tuscan Grill and Le Petit Chef, you don't pay a flat fee for Sushi on Five. It's a la carte, charges per item, so you only eat what you pay for. Right outside Sushi on Five is Cellar Master's Lounge Bar. It is what it looks like, though it seems to specialize somewhat in wine as there was a wine tasting event on board the day we ate at Sushi on 5. Just beyond Cellar Masters on Deck 5 aft is the upper level of San Marco, the Celebrity Constellation's main dining room. We'll cover our main dining room experience in a future video, but while San Marco is a fairly large split-level restaurant, to us it never seemed too big or too crowded, and the waiting staff were tremendous. Yeah, they were among the best we've had on any cruise we've ever sailed.
Next to the entrance to San Marco on deck 5 aft is blue, the dining room for suite and aqua class passengers. On this cruise we were neither of those things, but we did manage to sneak in one morning for a quick peek. From what we can tell, Blue offers a more refined dining experience, a breakfast, lunch and dinner with no need to book tables in advance. Directly below Blue is Lumine, another exclusive restaurant, this time restricted to sweet passengers only. Unfortunately, we were unable to film in there. In front of Lumine and the lower entrance to San Marco on deck 4 is the Rendezvous Lounge. This was mainly used as a quiz and live music venue. Though on this morning it was full of art, ready to be auctioned. Carrying on towards midship on deck 4 brings you to the Martini Bar and another bar, Crush. On our cruise these two bars were packed with all different nationalities enjoying themselves. It was great. Just beyond Crush, you can see the entrance to Fortunes, which is the ship's casino. Opposite these two bars, you can see there are plenty of places to sit, socialise or just people watch. Regardless of the time of day or night, there's always seemed to be somewhere to sit and relax in the Grand Foyer. This is Fortunes, the onboard casino on the Celebrity Constellation. Our cruise was fairly port heavy, which is one of the reasons we chose it, and so the casino wasn't open as often as it is on some cruises. Still, we gave it a go one night, and if casinos are your thing, it's not too bad. Forward of the casino on deck 4 brings you to Michael's Club a lounge exclusive to suite guests on the Celebrity Constellation. This is equal to the retreat lounge you would find on other celebrity ships. We have to say, even if we were suite guests, which we weren't, this kind of venue wasn't really for us. But if you're in a suite and it suits you, it seems a quiet, private place to be. Going downstairs from Michael's Club brings you to Deck 3. Here at Midship, you are at the bottom of the Grand Foyer. And you can find the shore excursions desk, the captain's club desk for rewards point passengers, and the general guest services desk. Again, even here on Deck 3, there are plenty of places to sit out of the way and quietly chat or read your day away in relative seclusion. Our final stop on this tour is Cuisine located on Deck 3, also known as Le Petit Chef, which is a specialty dining venue we dined at on the fourth day of our cruise. We'll give a full review of our experience in a later vlog, but the main highlights were the animations projected onto every plate throughout the meal. And that's it everyone, our first ship tour. In fact, our first ever video on YouTube. If you made it this far, we can't thank you enough for watching. And if you like what we've done, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll really help us at this early stage in our channel, Traveling with Teens. There'll be more content to come over the coming weeks and months, so check back every Monday for a new episode. We have some great trips booked and we'll be traveling with our two teens throughout Europe and North America. We'll be vlogging everything and we look forward to sharing our trips with you. Thanks for watching.